Hi friends, in this video I will show you how to charge a bike or car battery at home. Sometimes it happens that you do not use the car or bike for a long time and due to that reason the battery gets completely discharged and your car or bike does not start. In those kind of situations, the device that we are going to create today will be helpful. This device I will be creating using mobile charger or a laptop charger. So let's first look at what exactly will be the end result. So this is the device that I have created. You can see it's placed inside a plastic box that was lying around in my house. And if you just open it up like that here, here are all the components. You can see the main thing is this buck converter. So this is basically a step down buck converter. This I am using to convert a laptop charger to a lead acid battery charger. If you are using a mobile charger then we will be using a step up converter. That is you will be increasing the 5 volts to 13.5 volts for charging a lead acid battery. Also the things that I have used in this are several things are completely optional. All these material like this box and this breadboard and all these jacks for connecting the wires are completely optional. You can directly solder the wires over here instead of using these jacks but in that case you will no longer be able to use the laptop charger or your mobile charger with your device because you'll be removing the connectors now let's see in detail how this thing is created and what all things you'll be required for doing this so as i already mentioned there are two ways we'll be looking at using a laptop charger and using a mobile charger normally people have a standard mobile charger that is a 5 volt 2 amp mobile charger we will be showing you what all components will require for both the ways obviously we will look at volt lead acid battery the voltage that i have mentioned is only for a 12 volt sealed lead acid battery the charging voltage that i mentioned in this video normally all the car and bike batteries 12 volt sealed lead acid battery now let's look what will be requiring for a mobile phone charger obviously you'll require a mobile phone charger but a standard charger we require that is a 5 volt 2 amp charger the next thing is a booster module that is XL6009. This DC DC booster model is easily available on several e-commerce platform. If you are in India then it will be available in Amazon, Flipkart, Snapdeal. On all the major e-commerce platforms it will be easily available. It retails around 100 to 120 rupees. Somewhere in that range. Input output characteristics are if you provide it an input between 3 volts to 32 volts. It has the capacity to increase it to 5 to 35 volts so it's a booster module the maximum current that it can deliver is 2 amps what we'll be doing is using this simple booster module the 5 volts that the phone charger is providing will be increasing that voltage to 13.5 this is the required charging voltage of a lead acid battery and if you are using a laptop charger you will require laptop charger that is around 15 to 35 volts the module that i have already shown is lm259 this is a dc to dc step down module since the voltage that the laptop charger is providing is a higher voltage than the required one we are now required that the voltage be reduced so that the charging voltage is achieved and the input characteristics as 3 volts to 40 volts is the input voltage and output it can give from 1.5 to 35 volts and again this can all give a 2 amp maximum current so what we'll be doing is we'll be reducing the voltage that is from our laptop voltage that is 15 volts or to 35 voltage range to our charging voltage that is 13.5 volt if you want to know which is the most preferred way for making this charger then I will suggest you go with the laptop charger. There are two reasons for that. And the first reason is the wattage that the laptop charger will provide will be much higher than a mobile charger because the maximum voltage at which your phone charger runs is 5 volts. So the maximum wattage that it can give is 10 watts. That is 5 into 2. Whereas a laptop charger will provide a higher wattage. So that means that it will be more powerful and your lead acid battery will get charged more quickly from a laptop charger compared to a mobile charger. The other reason is it's more efficient. That is power will not get wasted that much in a laptop charger compared to a mobile charger. Because in a mobile charger we are increasing 5 volts to 13.5. That is a huge difference. And because the voltage are so different the efficiency with which this module will convert them would be very low so it will be like around 70% of the power gets converted while 30% is wastage 
in the conversion process in heat so in a mobile charger again due to the conversion loss charging time will again be more so if you have an option between choosing whether you want to create this device using a laptop charger or mobile charger I would prefer you go with the laptop charger so now let's look at the components required in this section most of the things will be optional uh, like an alligator clip wire would be ideal to have but it most of the lead acid batteries have got bolts in them so you can turn the wire in the bolt and screw the bolt tightly so that way it will get connected without any issue so alligator clips if you have it lying around in your house fair enough but if you do not want to buy it this component is completely optional also zero pcb board is optional if you want to solder all the components onto a pcb board you can do this otherwise it's not required a dc to female jack this is for connecting the laptop charger to the step down module this is also optional you can bypass this by if you cut the laptop charger wire if you do not want to cut the laptop charger then you require this dc female jack model and this particular dc female jack should fit perfectly into your laptop charger so accordingly you have to select the dc jack also so if you can cut the laptop charger and straight away connect the wires then this component is not required diode this will requiring one diode this is also optional the role of this diode is basically to prevent the reverse current flow that is from the battery to the charging module and this usually doesn't happen on if the module is on but if the module is off then the current flows from the opposite direction it will not spoil the module so this is also optional if you have any device lying around in the most of them will have some diode or the other so you can extract a diode from that and also the same thing for dc female jack i have used the dc female jack which i had shown previously from a old cordless phone and i did not buy it separately and a plastic box will be handy if you are planning to use it for a long time if it's just for one time project then it's not required and now let's look at the tools that you'll be required tools and consumables so obviously you'll be requiring a soldering iron and this is to solder the wires onto the component that is the main DC to DC converter and you will require solder wire and flux, flux is optional but solder wire is must and you will also be requiring a multimeter, multimeter is required for setting the voltage value, I will show you how it is done and obviously you will be requiring some wires, this you can extract from any old electrical cabling or you can buy it if you do not have any spare electrical wire, pliers would be handy, it will allow you to maneuver the wires onto their lead acid battery and also in onto the module wire stripper is optional you can use the scissors for that if you do not have a wire stripper it will be easier with the wire stripper to remove the insulation and a small screwdriver is required which will be used for changing the voltage value of the potentiometer to set the correct output voltage so now let's look at the circuit diagram the circuit diagram for both the setup is, is very simple you can see over here this is the mobile charger that is a simple 5 volts 2 amps charger and you have to connect it to the input side so on the board it will be mentioned IN plus IN minus so this is the input and output plus output minus the one thing you have to be very very careful on connecting the correct polarities that is you make sure that you connect the positive with the positive end or in the negative with the negative end if you by chance connect it in the opposite direction and switch it on then this component will not last it will catch fire so be extremely careful while connecting the polarities and also a similar thing for the output make sure when you connect it to your lead acid battery the output plus should correspond should be connected directly to the output plus of the battery and the output minus should be connected to the output minus of the battery do not connect it on the reverse order or your battery instead of charging it will discharge completely and it will get spoiled and this diode will be connecting it in a reverse bias fashion so this silver end you are seeing this is the negative portion and the black end is the positive portion so the silver end should point towards the positive terminal and the black end will that is the positive portion should turn to the negative portion of the battery so this means that if the current is flowing from the reverse direction that is from the battery to the module so this is the positive this is the negative so in that scenario this diode is in reverse bias and in diodes in reverse bias does not conduct so this will block the current from flowing from the battery to the module but 
on the other hand if when we switch on the module the current will flow from this this will become both positive this will become negative so it will become in forward bias and diode in forward bias conducts electricity so this will allow the current conduction in this fanner but when you are setting the voltage the voltage is set using this potentiometer over here so using the small screwdriver you have to turn this screw till the time the output voltage reaches 13.5 voltage you might have to turn it quite a lot the voltage doesn't change in a linear fashion also one thing to note if you are using a diode make sure that you set the output voltage by measuring the output voltage after the diode because in forward bias there is a small voltage drop after you connect a diode depending on the type of diode can range from 0.3 volts to 0.75 volts so make sure that you check the output voltage after the diode so that was the circuit diagram if you are using a mobile phone charger the main difference between mobile phone charger and the laptop charger is the module other things are all the same you just have to connect the positive to the positive negative to the negative and similarly over here diodes again in the reverse bias if it in this negative portion it should be connected to the positive end of the battery positive portion should be connected to the positive end of the module only thing changes is this instead of a dc to dc boost module you will be using a buck converter that will be stepping down the voltage other than that all the things the same now i'll show you how to set the voltage i'll be connecting it to a multimeter and i'll show you how it is done hi friends this is the circuit with that we'll be seeing this is for laptop converter so this is basically a step down module and we'll be converting our laptop voltage that is we have got a toshiba laptop adapter and if you can see i don't think it would be visible in the camera but it here it's here mentioned 19 volts so we'll be giving a 19 volts input and we'll be stepping down that 19 volts into 13.5 volts so let's do that first let's connect the laptop dc jack to our dc jack converter as mentioned previously this is not required if you directly solder the wires so as soon as i connect the dc jack you can see the input light gets turned on that's the red light and now let's turn on the multimeter now let's check the input voltage we have set the multimeter to the voltage 20 volt setting as you already know it's around 19 volts of input so let's check the input voltage so the blue wire is the negative wire and the yellow wire is the positive wire so let's see so as mentioned on the laptop adapter it's 19.2 volts of input voltage now let's see the output voltage now you can see over here this is the black thing that you can see this is our diode which we are using for blocking any reverse flow of current from the battery to the power socket via this module now let's check the output voltage i'll be connecting the output terminal after the diode so that we we'll get the accurate reading so i have connected the plus to the plus and now i'll touch the minus so as you can see it's giving an output voltage of around 14 volts with a fluctuation because the connections are loose but it's around 14 volts the reason i've set it to 14 volts is because when i connect the battery there is a bit of resistance charging resistance inside the battery so as soon as i connect the battery the output voltage that will be shown will be around 13.5 volts so you have to set the voltage after connecting the batteries now let's check the voltage before the diode so this should be much higher than 14 around 0.35 higher 14.4 approximately so this is the voltage drop that is while well, the current passes through the diode depending on the type of diode the this voltage may be a little bit higher or lower anyway you have to measure the voltage after the diode so that will be the voltage that will be applied to the battery not the voltage before that and now you can see over here this screw that you are seeing now what we'll do i'll just rest my multimeter pins you can see now i'll just turn the uh, screw so as you can see the voltage okay so i'll just turn the screw and you can see i'm turning it clockwise and the voltage is increasing 14.6 so maximum it will go to 19 volt that is our input voltage there now let's 
turn it in the anti-clockwise direction and you can see the voltage now is decreasing so using the screw you can easily control the output voltage and you have to set the output voltage after connecting the batteries now as i have not connected the batteries i will be setting it as i already know my internal battery resistance is around of 0.5 volt drop is there after i connect the batteries so that's why i'll be setting it to 14 volts so after connecting the battery you have to set the output voltage to 13.5 volts battery voltage is around 12 volts or lower then it will take around 12 hours for the battery to be fully charged so you can connect this module overnight and then check the voltage in the daytime so i hope you like this video if yes give a thumbs up share subscribe keep watching youtube channel howisolve.com thanks for watching friends see you later Bye-bye.